In the last video, I showed you how to use authorized views to aggregate data, optimize queries, and even lock down columns of information or rows that have data you don't want users to be able to access. If all you're trying to do, though, is lock down sensitive data, a better and simpler solution for you might be to use policy tags. Policy tags check at query time to make sure that the user who submitted the query has access to see the data that they're trying to query. And I'm going to show you how you can use a policy tag to lock down a column that has data in it you don't want a user to access. Now before we get started, there are two things that you should know about policy tags. First, you can only enable them for projects that belong to an organization. And secondly, they cannot be applied to external tables, like if your data is actually stored in a Google Sheet and you're only querying it through BigQuery. Going back to our scenario, we have an outside consultant who's coming in to build a data pipeline for us. Now let's say that we decide that we do not want this consultant to access our user ID column in the Google Analytics data because this is considered personally identifiable information we don't want an external consultant to view it. Now, using some of the tricks that I showed you earlier, we're going to grant this consultant temporary access to edit the data in BigQuery, and then long-term access to monitor logs, so after the project is over, they can make sure that nothing breaks. Additionally, we're going to use a policy tag to block access to the user ID column so that the outside consultant cannot view sensitive data. So we're going to walk through this in three steps. The first step is to grant permissions to the consultants at the project level, exactly like we reviewed in the first video of this series. Once that's complete, we will create a taxonomy which organizes your policy tags. Then we'll add these policy tags to the columns that we want to hide from the consultant and we'll run a test to make sure that everything is running properly. When you're working with an outside consultant who might have multiple people on their team, you have a few options. On the one hand, you could grant access to each individual user, or you could ask the consultant to create a Google group, and you simply grant access to that group. What this does is it allows you to have one principle that you've granted access to, knowing that that principle represents the consultancy. The consultant can then have the freedom to roll on their own users off and on the account as they need while they're working on the project. And everyone in that Google group will receive the exact same access. For our example, I have created a new user. This is data.engineer at ken-williams.com. And I have also created a group called consultants at ken-williams.com. We are going to grant access to the group consultants, but then when we do our test, we're going to test as the individual user, data engineer. Since I've already reviewed how to create time-bound roles at the project level in a former video, I'm going to speed up the video while I do this. However, if you'd like a refresher, be sure to jump back and review the project level roles and permissions video. Okay, so now you can see that what I did is I created three different roles on the consultants at ken-williams.com principle. BigQuery data editor and BigQuery data user expire three months from now. I'm writing this in July 2023, so they're only going to have until the end of September to finish the initial data pipeline project. However, I've given them 12 months as a logs viewer so that they can monitor the logs for issues after the project ends. To verify that this is working properly, all I need to do is go over to BigQuery. I'm going to grab a data set. 
link and I'm going to share this link with data engineer at ken-williams.com see if he has access and here we go data engineer does have access to all of the data inside of my project even though I didn't explicitly grant access to this user but to the group that this user is a part of now we're ready to move on to step two which is to create a taxonomy but there are a few different API's and permissions that I need to give myself to make sure that I can do this now I've navigated to API's and services and library and here I can search I'm gonna search for data catalog the first API that you need to enable is the Google Cloud Data Catalog API. The second API that you need to enable is the BigQuery Data Policy API. This is the API that you need to manage data policies. Now the other thing you need to do is make sure you have the proper roles. To make the changes I'm about to show you, you'll need to be a policy tag admin, and you'll also need to be either a BigQuery owner or a BigQuery data admin. Once the APIs are enabled and you've got the proper roles, you can navigate to BigQuery and policy tags. And when this window loads, you'll see that your only option here is to create a taxonomy. Now Google has a very helpful article about taxonomies and how to come up with taxonomies that make sense for your business. But I do have a couple of tips that I'll share and an example that we might use for this scenario. In my example, I want to create a taxonomy. And I'm just going to give this a name, example. And I'm going to put two policy tags inside of this taxonomy. One of them is generic and can be applied to lots of different types of data. So I'm going to call this highly sensitive. And then I'm going to add a sub tag of a very specific type of data, which is email. Now in the next video, I'm going to come back to this email policy tag. But for now, all I want to do is identify the user ID column in Google Analytics as a highly sensitive field. And that way, my consultant will not be able to access that field or run a query against it. So I'm going to create this taxonomy. And the first thing I have to do is enforce access control. This means that now this taxonomy can be applied to the data that I have in BigQuery. In order for somebody to see a column of data that has a policy tag assigned to it, that user has to have one of these two roles, fine grain reader or masked reader. And since I didn't grant either of those roles to consultants at kin-williams.com, I can be confident that this policy tag will prevent them from accessing the data in the columns where the tags have been applied. So the next thing to do is apply the tags. And to do that, you go to the SQL workspace and you navigate to the tables where you'd like to apply them. I'm gonna to go to the Google Analytics data. And you click Edit Schema on the table. When you do that, you can see a list of all the columns and you can check the boxes next to them. I'm gonna check the user ID box and you can click Add a Policy Tag. Now you can see here is the taxonomy that I just created and there is a radio button. So you can only choose one policy tag per column. This is not an email address. Again, that's for the next video. I'm just going to call this highly sensitive data. I'm going to select that and I'm going to save the change. And immediately you can see that now the data in this column has been restricted. One thing to be aware of with Google Analytics specifically is that a new table is created every day. So this policy tag is only going to apply to the July 1st table. If you want to apply a new policy tag every day after your table is created, it's a little bit more complicated to do that and we might cover that in a different video. In this case though, to keep it simple, let's just go back over and test to verify that uh, data engineer now cannot access the user ID column.
you can see the consultant can see that the user ID exists in the table before the time that we added that policy tag. When I refresh the data set, now there's a note that says I have restricted access to the data in this column. I'm going to try and query this table. And if I try to select user ID, access is denied because this user neither has fine grained reader access nor masked access. So this user is now not able to run a query against that column, despite the fact that they do have access to everything else inside of this table. So I'm going to navigate back to my IAM window and I'm going to go back to consultants at ken-williams.com. I'm going to add another role here, fine grain reader. For now, I'm not going to add a condition just for this example. I'm going to save this. And now when I navigate to my data engineer window, I can come back and try and run this query again. This user now can see a query that was returned without re running an error. Policy tags make it very easy for you to identify columns in a table that have sensitive data and then lock down those columns so that only the users with fine-grained reader access can run queries against them. However, sometimes you don't want to completely lock down access. Sometimes you want to be able to give a user the ability to run a query. You just want the results of that query to be hashed in some way. That's what we're going to talk about in the next video about masking data using policy tags.